Christian song. Don't give up, saints. Amen. 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 That's right. The devil will fight you time after time for you to give up. That's true. Trying to deceive you. But don't give up. Amen. Amen. Let us stand, please. We want to turn to the book of Genesis tonight in chapter 3. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 3. We wish to read the whole chapter, but maybe we'll avoid some of the verses that we won't be dealing with for the sake of time. So let's begin in verse 1 of Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they so feely thick leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman who thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also... How you pronounce that, brother? Thistles. Thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken... For thus thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Let us pray. You may be seated. Many messages have been preached about this subject. And no doubt that most of us have heard many times teachings from the third chapter of the book of Genesis. The story of the fall of man. Tonight we want to preach to you for a little while on the thought, the tempter, the tempted, and the temptation. This is the terrible ending of something that started beautiful, good, and perfect. What we read tonight is sad. Very sad. Because 
man became responsible before the eyes of God for what he did. Amen. Now we know that what Adam and Eve did didn't, su didn't surprise God because the Bible will tell us that Jesus Christ, the Savior of mankind, was prepared from even the foundation of the world, before the foundation of the world, which it will teach us that God knew that Adam and Eve were going to fall. Yeah. We know that by the scriptures. Now, what we read tonight should be a warning to all of us. Amen. I take it as a warning to me. It is the fact that we have to face the tempter. Now, some of you old folks, some of you old saints don't, don't say, now I'm too old and I don't think that I'm going to be tempted. I want to tell you, as long as you live in this body of clay that we are made of, we are going to face the tempter. And necessarily, we don't have to deal with immorality tonight and talk about uh, being tempted with a woman or your sisters with a man, so forth and so on. We need to realize there are all kinds of temptations. Amen. And temptation will come to the door of our hearts from time to time. And may the Lord help us tonight as we look into the principles that are taught in this chapter 3. Amen. To be wise, to receive the knowledge of God, to apply it to our hearts so that we can have victory. Amen in our souls. Now we want to see several truths tonight in this lesson. And the first lesson that we want to learn tonight is the tactics of the tempter. All right, in verse 1 of chapter 3, <clears throat> we see here that the devil, Satan, uses the serpent to reach Eve. All right, so we see tonight that one of the tactics of the devil, the tempter, is to tempt us through the attractive. That which will be attractive to you, the devil will use to get at you. All right, in verse 1 it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Now, the devil didn't use an ass or a mule. Come on. He used the animal that was the most subtle of all animals. Yeah. Somebody said, why, Brother Figueroa? Because if a dumb animal would have talked to Eve, Eve had not paid attention to it. Amen. But this was the serpent. Yes. And she knew it. She knew that that animal was the most subtle of all the animals that God had created. There was no other animal more subtle or smarter than the serpent. And God used it. This will teach us that the devil will try to come to us and tempt us th through that which will seem attractive to you and to me. Yeah. And that could be a lot of different things. Yeah. Right. All that is evil and deadly to your soul may look many times the opposite. Those things that could be deadly to your soul and to the welfare of your soul. The devil can make it look the opposite. That's right. Amen. And may seem to you attractive and even good to your own eyes. Amen. Now the serpent was the most subtle of all animals. Surely, surely Eve thought that someone so smart could harm her. Come on. As Eve listened to the snake or to the serpent, no doubt that she thought she should, she should know. After all, she's the most smart of all the animals. Somebody who knows so much can hurt me. Many times we have fallen. Amen. In the mistake of believing that because a person may know a lot of things, it's not going to harm you. But that person could harm you. That's right. Amen. There's a flower in Africa. And many times, maybe you heard of it. There's a flower in Africa that is beautiful. And uh, it's called it's, a, it's called the eating uh, the eating plant. Maybe it has another name. But anyway, it's a beautiful flower, and the flower open as insects will fly into into that flower. 
that flower will close its leaves and kill the insect because it's a beautiful plant and it smells real nice and real good. And that's the same way that the devil tricks so many today. Amen. By that which seems beautiful, yeah. harmless, attractive to you, it could be anything. Amen. It could be a doctrine. Sure. Come on. Yeah. It could be a teaching yeah. that seems attractive to you. One time I was talking to uh, one of the ministers that got trapped in this heresy that we just got victory over some time ago and he told me that he was preaching that because he thought it was going to help the church well listen that which will come from God doesn't divide Amen. 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 but the devil has a way of see of making you believe that a teaching can help us uh-huh. come on and it's deadly it can be deadly it can kill you it can hurt you so we see as uh, as we read in Genesis 3 and 1 and I want you to keep your eyes in that scripture It says, now the serpent was more what subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And that's the same instrument that the devil used trying to reach Eve. Now keep it. Keep this in your mind. The devil will follow the same principle. Every time he comes to you or every time he comes to me with a temptation, he will use that which can be used as a bait to get you. And let me tell you, the purpose of temptation is destruction. And the strategy of temptation is seduction. You follow me now? The purpose of a temptation is to destroy you. And the strategy of temptation is to to seduce you. And listen, you can be seduced by ugliness. Or dumbness. Nobody is seduced by ugliness. Come on. We are seduced by that which seems to our eyes attractive, pretty, beautiful. Yeah. Come on. That's right. The devil will use that which seems more attractive to you. So let me tell you uh, this this uh, this evening. Anything in this world that may seem attractive to you, you watch it. You listen to me? Amen. You watch it because the devil can use it later on to trap you and get Amen. you. All right, the second thing I want you to see here in verse 1 is that, that the devil tried to make Eve doubt what God had said in verse 1, right there. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Okay, we see here how the devil tried to put a doubt in Eve's mind and that what God had said was true. Now listen, what the devil was trying to tell Eve, in other words, was this. Don't put your trust in what God has said. God could be wrong. Come on. What he's telling Eve is this. Don't trust in the love of God. After all, if he loved you so much as he said he does, why he's keeping from you that would you like? Many times the devil will come to us and he'll try to make us doubt the love of God, the goodness of God, especially when we are going through trials and hard places. And he'll tell you, see, he got you in a bad spot, in a hard place. If he loved you, why he allowed that to happen to you? Now that's very easy. When nothing is going wrong. But what about some saints who have lost children? Come on. Amen. Why me, Lord? Yes. Why you didn't heal my, my little girl? Why didn't you heal my little boy? Why did I have to lose my companion when I really needed her or I needed him? Come on. Amen. Listen, the devil will come to you and tell you God doesn't love you as much as you think he does. Because if he did, he would have not taken away that from you. And he'll make you doubt the goodness of God. All the time he'll come and he'll make you doubt the judgments of God. And he'll tell you, you don't have to be afraid of God. After all, God loves you so much, he'll never put judgment on you. See, he speaks on all, all kinds of ways. Sometimes he'll make you doubt that he loves you. All the time he'll tell you he loves you so much, he'll never chastise you. Come on. 
And he'll say, you do this and you do that. After all, he loves everybody so much. There's no way that he can send nobody to hell. Amen. That's, That's right. the way it works. That's right. The devil will talk from both sides of his mouth. Amen. And everything he'll tell you is a lie. Amen. Now you know that false preachers today they will tell you that after all, God will never send nobody to hell. I'm a father myself. I will never send a child of mine to hell. And if I'm if I'm a human uh, a human being and I will never send a child of mine to hell, how much more God? He'll never send anybody to hell. And the devil will tell you that. Doubt the judgments of God. Don't believe in God's judgment. Because he loves you so much. Even if you do wrong, he'll never hit you hard. Come on. Listen, every time we are tempted, we have a confrontation with the Word of God. And that confrontation is, with the temptation comes the thought, do I believe what God says, or I don't believe what God says? Amen. And listen, every time a person falls into a temptation, he decides in his mind that God doesn't mean what he says. That's why, why he does what he does. The devil tried to put that thought in Eve's mind, make her doubt. Amen of the goodness and the love and judgment of God. And then verse 1, right there, we see another of the tactics of the devil. He quote incorrectly the word of God. Do you see? Do you read what we read? Brother Kelly, would you please read that? The, the last uh, uh, part of the scripture. And he said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Excuse me. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall hath God said. He's carried it down with it. Yes. Yeah. Alright. Ye shall not what? Eat of every tree of the garden. Okay, if you read that scripture, it seems that he's telling the truth. Uh-huh. But he's incorrectly, listen, he's incorrectly quoting the scriptures. Yes. Yeah. What God really said, chapter 2, verse 16. Let us see what God says. There's a difference in what God said and what the devil said. Amen. He rephrased it. That's right. Come on, he rephrased it. In chapter 2, and verse 16, he says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Amen. Now follow me now. God said, You can eat of all the trees except one. Yeah. What the devil said? The devil said, has God said that you cannot eat of every tree? Uh-huh. Do you see how he rephrased it? Yes. Yeah. All right. God has said, ye shall not eat of every... Uh, the devil said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. But God said differently. That's right. He rephrased it. Many times the devil will come to you with temptation and he will misquote the scripture right in your mind to confuse you yeah. and get you. Right, right. Okay, in verse 2, we follow the tactics of the devil. And we see here that he tried to make Eve, he tried to start a conversation with Eve. Verse 2, and the woman said unto the serpent, and that's what the devil wanted. Yes. He wanted to start a conversation with Eve. Yes. And he got her. Somebody said, what do you mean, Brother Figueroa? Don't talk to the devil. Amen. 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 Now, it's very easy to say that, but see, we do that in our minds. Yeah, that's right. yeah, right. And the worst thing that you can do is to start a mental conversation with your tempter. Amen. It'll never get you anywhere. Right. Somebody said, what did Eve try to do? Eve tried to defend God. But we don't have to defend God. Amen. Amen. That's right. Now listen, the devil tried to make Eve... To try to make her to start a conversation with him. And that always is bad. Amen. In verse 4, he got bolder. Yeah. And finally he told her a lie. An open lie. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. That's right. All temptations carry a lie as a bait. Amen. You follow me? Amen. Every temptation carries a a lie as a bait. Now this is the same thing Babylon is saying today. Yeah. That's what the false preachers are saying today. Right, Sin. You won't die. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. 
They are telling you, come on, that after we get saved, we can sin and we don't lose our salvation. It's the same lie that the serpent told Eve, eat, disobey, come on, sin, you won't die. I want to tell you how serious this is when we confront the false preachers of Babylon. They are preaching the same thing the serpent was preaching to Eve. Right. The same identical lie. Amen. Do it. Amen. Nothing is going to happen to you. The Baptist will tell you the same thing. We can sin and we will lose our salvation. We only will lose our joy, they say. All right, let's come now farther down. What the tempter was saying is that sin doesn't carry with it any consequence. When the tempter told Eve, you eat and nothing is going to happen to you, you won't die. What he was actually saying is this, sin doesn't carry with it any consequence. But God has said in Ezekiel 18 and 4, the soul that sineth, it shall die. And in Romans 6.23 it says, For the wages of sin is death. Amen. And in Galatians 6 and 7 it says, But be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, thou shalt he also reap. Amen. That's what God said. Amen. But Satan said, No, nothing is going to happen to you. You can sin and you get away with it. You won't reap the consequences. I want to tell you something, young people. Whatever you do in this life is going to catch up with you. Amen. Amen. You are going to have, you're going to have to live with the decisions that you make. Amen. You marry wrong and you will reap the consequences the rest of your life. Amen. I'm telling you. Whatever decision we make in life, we're going to have to live with it. Amen. You go to the world and you get mixed up and you may go to the, to the, uh, to, to the lowest of all conditions and maybe you'll come back and God, God will receive you and you'll repent and you may even get saved but you're going to have to live with the consequences of all the things that you did while you were in sin. Amen. Now God may heal the wounds but you are going to have the marks. Amen. And you're going to have to live with it Amen. for the rest of your life. Amen. So think before you make a decision. Yes. Amen. Think before you do it. Amen. Think of the consequences. Amen. The devil told Eve, do it. And that's the, the philosophy that is governing many people today. If it feels good, do it. That's what they say. If it seems right, do it. It is your right. You are your own man. You are your own woman. Who is to tell you not what, what not to do? God said, don't touch it. Don't do it. So we want to see tonight as we look at the tactics of the tempter. He will always use that which seems attractive to you. That which is, which is closer to you. Now all of us Listen, listen now. All of us have a weak spot in our lives. Amen. I'll tell you. Amen. That's right. That's right. There's not one here in this room that doesn't have a single, doesn't have a, a, a soft spot somewhere. That's right. I don't, that's right. Certainly I don't care if you've been saved 50 years or 40 Amen. years. That's right. There's an area in your life where Satan can work on you. Sure. Right, right. And you feel it in that area more than in other areas. Sure. That's right. Tell Amen. Now it can be, listen, it, it could be along the lines of sex. It could be money. Come on. It could be fame. You want to be looked on and you know all these kinds of things. It could be material gain. It could be all kinds of things. That's right. Now you watch it. Amen. The devil will come to you and he'll hit you in that spot. Yes, sir. Over. And over again, because he knows that's where you are the weakest. Amen, Amen for everybody. Amen. He will work on you. Amen. And the only way that you'll be able to have victory in your soul is, number one, if you recognize it. Yes. And you acknowledge it. Yes. And you accept it. 
in a humble attitude and you pray and you keep yourself submitted to God in that area. Yes, he will use that which is attractive. Remember, he'll misquote the scriptures on you. He'll lie to you over and over again. Now let us see the wrong reaction of the tempted. Eve reacted in the wrong manner. And what we read about Eve is what you and I have to avoid when we are tempted. That's right. Now what did Eve do? Number one, Eve didn't keep away from Satan's path. Right. Verse 6, brother. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, All right, now listen. Wise, listen. Have you noticed in the scripture that when Satan gets hold of Eve, Eve was alone? Yes. No. You, you yes. notice that? That's right. What in the world? Where in the world was Adam? Now follow me now. I'm going to tell you how the devil will work on you. He'll try to get you by yourself. He'll try to get you when you are a little bit far away from your husband. So I said, what do you mean? I'm a man. Who is our husband? Christ is our husband. Isn't that right? If you don't keep close to Jesus, I'm not saying it's going to happen. The going to jump on you. Yes, sir. In a modern manner and in other ways. Amen. That's so true. Come on. Amen. All right. Eve didn't keep away from Satan's path. Many people fall into temptation because they don't keep away from the path of temptation. Amen. If you know that something is harmful for you, keep away from it. Amen. Whatever it may be. But Eve didn't keep away from Satan's path. The Bible says that there's a highway of holiness. Amen. You know what it says? Yeah, there's a highway, a highway of holiness. Amen. And it says that what won't be there? The unclean. The unclean won't be there. It won't pass over. So you stay in the highway of holiness, you stay in your place, and you won't see so much of the devil. Amen. But if you keep away from the, the highway of holiness, and you begin to fool around and walk away from your husband. The That's devil right. will get you and work on you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, my question is, what in the world was she doing so close to this tree? Yeah. What was she doing? Why people from temptation? Because they play with temptation. Yeah. Very serious. They play with it. Amen. That is right. Well, I, I can go this far. I know where, where to draw a line. I can go this far and I can stop. Listen, once you get under the influence of temptation, you don't know how far you'll go. That's right. Amen. I believe that. Amen. You lose control of your senses. That's right. And you don't know where to draw the line. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, none of us is secure unless we are secure in God. Amen. Now, we have enough testimonies in the last few years to have seen some giants fa fall down. And those things don't happen just because they happen. Somebody got the order of God somewhere along the line. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Eve didn't keep away from Satan's path. What, what was she doing so close to this tree? Do you see what verse 6 says? Now, according to what we read, from verse 1 to verse 5, and you follow me. We don't have any, anything to prove that she was being talked to by the devil when she was by the tree. Now, this temptation could have taken days, even weeks, sure. especially from verse 1 to verse 6. Amen. But what we see next in verse 6 is, that she saw that the tree was good for food. Well, it shows me that somewhere she got close to the tree and began to inspect the tree with different eyes. Oh, how many times. Sometimes I can remember even my pastor bring a message of warning and the same person that heard the warning falls. Shouldn't have. 
right, brother. Amen. Okay. In verse 6, we see that Eve saw with different eyes the tree. That's what temptation will do. Amen. It'll make you see things differently. That's how it works in you. It works in your senses. Amen. Come on. Amen. Remember that temptation, most of temptation comes through your eyes. Amen. Come on. Come through your eyes. Amen. So somewhere there in verse 6, we see that she saw with different eyes the tree. All right, as we keep reading, the Bible says right there in verse 6, you follow me there? Amen. And when the woman saw, and when the woman saw, and when the woman saw, that a tree was good for food. Now follow me now. She saw that it was good for food. You know what it says? Yes. Not that it was good for her soul. No. Or that it was good for God's glory. No, but it's good for me. Yes. When are you a prey to temptation? When things seem good to you. Amen. You look at it and you say, is this for the glory of God? Should I go there? Should I do this? Should I dress this way? It seems good to me. I look pretty in it. Lord. It seems that I could have a lot of fun doing it. Is it good for my soul? Amen. Yes. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 When she looked on the tree, the tree seemed good to her for food. Yes. For the flesh. For the earthly man. It didn't seem good for her soul for God's glory. So we must look on temptation, dear ones, tonight in a different manner, how Eve. When we are tempted along any line, even about, about buying things, or going places, or saying things, or looking on things, we must ask ourselves this question. Is it good? Will I obtain something good out of this? No, it only seems good to you. Are you following me? Yes. You know what? You are being tempted. I am tempted. None of us here are away from temptation. Amen. Temptation will come to you. And you can get burned. And when you get burned, you're going to suffer the consequences. Yes, that's right. And remember that as you are burned, you are taking people with you. That's right. Many feel that it is their right to eat their own life. It is my right. Now why in the world God is telling me to keep away from the tree? It seems good to me. It is my right to eat it. Many feel today that it is their right to do things. Listen dear ones, we are not here to discuss what is our right or is not our right. What we are here is to, to be interested in is if what we are doing is glorifying God. That's the point. Amen. Now she believed, she believed that she would become wiser if she ate. Isn't that what the devil told her? Yeah. Will you please read that again, brother? Yeah. For me. Verse 6, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and, and it, it was, was pleasant, pleasant to the eyes. Pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. When she looked at the tree, she said, Hey, this tree can make me wise. Are you following me now? Yeah. yeah. She believed that she could become wiser if she ate it. Uh -huh. What the devil was telling her was this. Eat from it and you learn. Come on. Uh -huh. You'll be informed. You owe it to yourself. Obtain information. Don't be a dumbbell. Get some knowledge. Now, many believe that it is necessary to experiment something to know it. And this is where the young people many times make a mistake. Daddy told me that I shouldn't do it. The pastor is telling me that I shouldn't do it. But I don't know because I never did it. Therefore, I don't know if they are right or wrong. Uh -huh. But if I try it, I could know. Oh, God. See? And if I knew, then I could stand and know for myself that it is so, it is wrong. But that's not the right way. Amen. Why? Amen. Listen, if I tell you, 
or your, uh, or your teacher tells you that the moon is a satellite that is going around the earth, you believe that and you accept it. Huh? That's right. But if we tell you, don't fool around in doing this and doing that, you don't believe it. You think that you should try it and find out for yourself if it's wrong. Come on. Come on, my time we hear a message. We shouldn't go that place and we shouldn't go the other place. But you don't believe that. The devil is telling you, you never went. I have been told that if I go, I'm going to feel wrong. Maybe if I go, I feel good. Come on. Amen. The pastor is telling me that if I go to that place or to the other place, I'm going to be hurt in my spiritual, in my spiritual life. Amen. But I should go and find out for myself. How come it's for, so hard for you to believe that? And you are being told what the moon is and you take it without you taking a plane or, or some kind of a uh, uh, ship and going over there and finding out for yourself if it's satellite or not. Amen. Come on. How many times parents will tell their children, that's not right, don't do that. It'll bring harm on you. But you are stubborn. And you say, well, that's what daddy said, but daddy could be wrong. Come on. Amen. After all, he doesn't look so smart. Right. <laughs> I heard that he was, you know, he, when he was in school, he got D's and C's. I'm an A student. I should know better. I think that I should try that first and find out for myself. And you are being told the same lie. In fact, the devil will give you excuses as this one. The Bible says, prove all things and hold that which is good. The devil says to you, the Bible says, prove all things. So why don't I have the right to try it and prove it? If it's not good, then I disregard it. But by the time that you prove it, you are ready to disregard it, you are ready to damage. The devil told her to know some things. Listen, young people, there are some things you better never know. Amen. If you know them, you'll hunt you. That's right. You'll hunt you. If you do it the first time, you'll hunt you. Amen. It was better if you had never done the first time. But you already did. And you have the knowledge of that and hunt you. It'll be with you. Can't erase it anymore. You got the knowledge of it. You tasted it. Come on. It'll be with you. It'll follow you. So don't let the devil tell you. Do it. And then you get knowledge. No, you can get knowledge without doing it. You don't have to disobey God to obtain knowledge and wisdom. Come on. The devil was telling her, do it and you'll get knowledge. But you don't have to sin to get knowledge. You don't have to sin to get wisdom. Stay away from sin and you'll be wise. Amen. Many children tell their parents, Daddy, Mommy, give me a break. Pastor, give me a break. Don't be on me all the time. Let me know for myself. Let me try. Come on. I can look back in my youth. And I'm sorry that I tried some things. Sure. But I've been very, I've never known. Amen. With knowledge comes responsibility. You are wise when you believe and do what God has said. The devil will tell you, you are dumb because you don't know. If you will, if you will do it, then you will know it. You know what they call that in, in, in the secular world? They call that pragmatism. A pragmatic individual is the person that believes that you have to do something to get the knowledge. But that's false pragmatism. You don't have to do wrong to get knowledge and wisdom. 
You become wise when you stay away from sin and from things that could compromise your soul and hurt you spiritually. Amen. Do you see that tonight? Yes. Now let us see the results of giving in into temptation. The results of giving in to temptation. Offer results. Now follow me now, please. Don't go to sleep. Amen. We want to go Amen. slow on this. Okay, verse 7. I want to see what happened when they ate. When, the, when they ate. The Bible says in verse 6 that she, he ate, and or she ate, and then he ate. What was the first reaction? The first result of giving in to temptation. What was brought in verse 7? And the eyes of them both were open. Uh-huh. And they knew that they were naked. Now listen. Follow me tonight, please. This doesn't mean that God wants you with your eyes closed. What it means is that they begin to have eyes for evil. Amen. Come on. Yeah. The eyes were open. What's it mean? That God wants you with your eyes closed? Ignorant? No. What it means is that when they sinned, they began to have eyes for evil. Come on. They begin to see evil. Can you see it? They begin, in other words, they begin to get used to darkness. For example, some of you remember back in the, the old days when you were in sin and you used to go to the, to, to the theaters or those places are dark. You remember? You went in and man, everything was dark to you. You could hardly see. Looking for the seats. Huh? After a while, you begin to see better. All right? And you could distinguish the, uh, you could distinguish all the people sitting around you that you couldn't distinguish when you came in because everything was dark to you. And all of a sudden, somebody comes in, maybe 15 or 20 minutes later, and you hear them say, man, it's dark over here. You say, dark? Man, I see everybody here. You know what happened? You got used to your darkness. Their eyes were open to sin and to evil. They began to see evil with different eyes. Come on. Adam and Eve began to get used to see evil and wrong. And remember that this happened before God faced them. Yeah. Amen. How long this took place? I don't know. It could have taken days. Mm How -hmm. many times we approach this chapter 3 and we think all this happened in a couple of hours. Well, I can't say it happened in a couple of hours. Because they had time to do a lot of sewing. Come yes. on. <laughs> they went to work. Now follow me now. The Bible says that their eyes were open. Is that what it says? Yeah. And they knew that they were naked. This is more than just to know that they didn't have any clothes on. I hope you follow me tonight. Yeah. They realized, listen, when they saw themselves naked, they realized that their bodies were machines to commit sin. Yeah. When they saw themselves in that light, they saw the potential that they had to sin. Their bodies were factories of sin. Somebody say, Brother Fidera, when that happens, whenever any child loses his innocency, yes. he realizes the potential that he has to sin and to do the wrong things. Yes. Come on. Yes. In fact, the Bible calls our bodies, what? Sinful flesh. The Bible says in Romans 8 and 3 that Jesus came in what? In the likeness of sinful flesh. Right. What does it mean? What does it mean that he was sinful? No. Yeah. What it means was that he came in a body yeah. that is used for sin. Right. But he didn't use it for sin, thank God. Thank he God. used it to do the will of God. Yeah. 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 Listen, dear ones. Your body, when you are not submitted to God, can be a machine. Yeah. 
a factory of committing sin. And when they opened their eyes and they saw their bodies, they realized, man, we can sin with this body. With this body. We can sin. Somebody said, give me a lesson. All right, little children don't know that they are naked until we tell them. Come on, you can get little children. You know, six months old and one year old. If you never tell them, they don't have any clothes, they don't have any shame. They don't care. When they begin to care, when you tell them, you can be like that, you have to be dressed. Once they lose that innocency, knowledge comes in. Yeah. And they begin to realize. Come on. Amen. That something in their body is connected with sin. God's presence and all of a sudden the service of God began to bother us and the preaching began to bother us you know why you are trying to hide from the presence of God amen what do you believe that some people avoid you sometimes verse 10 another another point over here and oh, said, verse I heard 10. thy voice in the garden okay and was afraid all right they were afraid Sin will bring fear. Fear that something is going to happen to you and that you won't get God to help you. What if my child gets sick? Who's going to pray for him? What if I get sick? Who's going to pray for me? What if I get in this mess? How am I going to get out? I'm afraid. I don't have God on my side anymore. Let us go back to the fifth book of the Bible. Where's the book? Deuteronomy. All right, chapter 28. 28 chapter. Sin brings fear. Amen. In, in chapter 28, verse 65, listen to what it says. And please follow me. Verse 65 says, And among these nations shall thou find no ease, neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind, and thy life shall hang in a doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. Why? Because you disobey me. You are in sin. You won't have rest. Amen. That's right, brother. You live in fear. Amen. Now listen, we are living in a generation of fearful people. And no fear of God, but listen, we live in a, in, a, in a day and time in which people are afraid. Yeah, that's what it is. What were the excuses that they presented? Adam said, the woman that thou brought me. He didn't say my wife. He said that woman. So he excused himself with his wife. Then God confronted Eve and she said, The serpent beguiled me. Yes, Eve, she beguiled you. Why? Because you were weak. Because you, did, you didn't have discipline. Come on. Because you were disobedient. Because you were independent. That's why the devil beguiled you. Come on. Amen. There's reasons why Satan beguiles some people. Amen. She was weak. No doubt about it. She was indisciplined. She did what she pleased. Come on. She was independent. She didn't stay close to Adam. Come on. Amen. She was disobedient. She got close to the tree. Somebody said, Brother Figueroa, don't you know that the reason, because I have heard this preach before, and it sounds good, but it's not right. I have heard this preach. The reason why she fell was because, first of all, she lied. She told the devil, God says, don't touch it. Now, nowhere in the word of God we read that God said, don't touch it. God says, thou shalt not eat from it. And the fact that she said, don't touch it, Many feel that she lied, but she didn't lie. 
she made it stronger. Why? Every sin you must avoid. And not every sin, but every avenue that will guide you to that sin. Amen. Why? Well, you couldn't eat it unless you touched it. If you never touch it, you'll never eat it. Come on. Amen. Right, brother. No, listen, when the Bible condemns any act, he condemns anything that will lead you to that act. Amen. That is good, brother. Somebody said, prove it to me. I'll prove it to you. God said, thou shalt not kill. Amen. Right? Amen. But he also said, if you hate your brother, you are what? Murder. All right, so hate is what? What will take you to murder. Yeah. What? Yeah. If you don't hate, you will murder. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. God said, Thou shalt not commit what? Fornication. Yeah. What it says? Yeah. But Jesus said, If you look on a woman and your sisters on a man, With eyes. Come on. You already commit what? Fornication in your heart. Amen. What is Jesus condemning? Listen. You'll never commit fornication with a woman or with a man unless you desire her first or him first. Come on. I'm going to tell you. So what is Jesus saying? He's telling you, don't even touch it. That's good. Amen. And this is good for all of us. Sure. Good admonition. Since you can't have that, don't even look it. Amen. Come on. Done. Amen. Since you can lawfully keep it or do it and keep your salvation, why torture yourself? Right. Let's be plain. Let's be plain now. Some of you sisters and brothers who don't have your companions anymore. Amen. Come on. Yes, that's right. You can you can do what you used to. You had a companion before. But you don't have one anymore. Amen. So instead of torturing yourself and thinking about this and thinking about that, don't even think. Amen. Come on. Amen. Since you can't have it. Come on, lawfully. And keep your integrity and your holiness. Don't even look on it. Don't even look on it. You can give yourself, amen, the privilege that you did once when you were married. Come on, to think on it. Come on, you had a companion then. You don't have one now. Don't even think. I'm trying to help you. I'm just trying to help you. These are Bible principles. Come on, listen. When God said, don't eat, and Eve said, God said, don't even touch it, she was making it stronger. She said, the only way for me, amen, to eat is touching it. So since I can eat it, I better not even touch it. Is that a lie? That's not a lie. Some of you are looking mighty pale tonight. I'm not preaching to you nothing that's strange. Amen. Come on, I'm going to preach you false doctrine. Amen. Amen. Praise God, brother. Amen. 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 This is good. Amen. Praise God. That's right. Amen. Come on, some of you single brothers and sisters. You can afford to. Amen. Now, come on. One day you'll get married and you'll be able to think. You can't afford now to give your seven to some thoughts. That's right. Amen. Why, Brother Figaro? Brother, am I going to find him no, now? No, no. <laughs> I don't want to hurt you people. <laughs> Listen. You're single. You can afford to think some things. Because you don't have a way to carry out those thoughts. Come on. In holiness and integrity. 
I know, look down, look up, don't be ashamed. Amen. I'm, I'm telling you. How did that get you? Amen. So when Eve said that God said, don't touch it, she knew that the only way for her to eat is by touching it. Now that's common sense. Sure, amen. You can't eat an apple and just and let you touch it. Amen. You may not have no hands, but by the time you, you set your teeth on it, you already touched it. So when she said, God said, don't touch it, she meant this. Since I can't sin unless I touch it, or since I can't sin unless I eat it, might as well don't even touch it. That's right. So might as well don't touch it. Amen. 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 Let's go back. I'm talking about the, about the tempter <coughs> and the temptation. Let us see, before we close tonight, something very important here that I believe is, is going to help us to understand. Uh, going back to Genesis 3 and verse 19. As God is confronting them, there's a lot of lessons we could learn from that, but we don't feel impressed to, to go there. The Bible says in verse 19, God is dealing now with Eve and Adam. And he says, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return to the ground. Follow me now. I want to tell you what's going to happen. There was a day in which man didn't have to work for his spiritual bread. Man, God came and talked with him. Now you have to work for yours. That's right. Yeah. Come on, I'm telling you. You have to go now hunt. Shh, I can find nothing here to help. Come on. We wish we could come to camp meetings and we, we, we can preach any kind of message that we have I preached before, but we have to be sure that God wants to preach that one, specifically. And we have to pray and hunt, Lord, your will. What were you going to preach? I could miss it. Now, I know he was talking here specifically about toiling the ground. But listen, he says, In thy sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. Listen now. For out of it was thou taken... For thus thou art, and unto thus shalt thou return. What was God telling Adam? Adam, Adam, you have become dust. That's what sin will do to you. Come on. It was not God's original plan for man to be just dust. He wanted man to be his partner. Can you please? That he could worship God and have fellowship with God. But sin reduced man to dust. And God is divine. Come on. When you sin, you become dirt. I can tell you more plain than that. You are reduced to dirt. To dust. Because you lost the most important thing you had. What? The presence of God in your soul is gone. And even though you still have your soul, as far as value is concerned, you lost it all. Man without God becomes dust. Amen. Amen. And he tells Adam and Eve, especially Adam, for thus thou art, and unto thus shalt thou return. Well, thank God. In the midst of all this, there's a glimpse of a hope in verse 15. God. And I will put empty, enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is the first promise in the word of God concerning the coming of Christ. Yes, amen. And thank God it was fulfilled. 1 Corinthians 15 and 47. And we close. 1 Corinthians 15 and 47 the first man is of the earth yeah. get it now I'm going to show you that we don't have to be dust Praise God. Praise come on God. it says right here in verse 47 the first man is of the earth it doesn't say the first man was of the earth it says is That's right. Amen. Amen. sinful man is of the earth Verse 47, the second man is the Lord from heaven. 
And he came to reveal us God. And he is in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. You are not earthly, you are spiritual. Amen. Come on, that's the ish in the word of God. I can speak to you as what? As spiritual. You ought to be spiritual. Yeah. Come on. You, to, you ought to have a mind for the spiritual. Yeah. You should have a spiritual senses. Come on. You ought to have discernment. Amen. You ought to have wisdom. You ought to have a spiritual values crafted in your mind and in your soul. You are not of the earth. But Adam, you sin. You have become dust. Yeah. Amen. Before you backslide, you think it real good. Because sin will reduce you to dirt. That's right. That's right. So as we consider tonight the temptation, the tempter, and the tempted, may the Lord help us tonight to avo avoid the pitfalls of Eve. Amen. She made some very serious mistakes. Yes. Listen, I can't tell you for how long she and, and Adam enjoyed fellowship. I don't know. That's right. It might have been years and months. I don't know. But listen. The devil got in. And when Adam, when, ha when Adam never thought that his wife was going to do what she did, she did it. And not only did she do it, but he fell with her in the same pit. And because of that, you and I are here tonight. Because of that. So listen, dear one. Once we are saved and sanctified, we are like in a paradise. A spiritual paradise. We go back to the book of Revelation. Where paradise appears again. The Garden of Eden, in a, in a symbolic language, appears again as the church. A place where we have plenty to eat. Plenty of water. Thank God. With a husband and holiness and truth. Praise God. And the devil wants to spoil your paradise. I believe that. Amen. You know how he'll do it? Amen. Through a temptation. What kind? The one where you are weak. Right. So may the Lord help you tonight. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank the Lord that good message of truth. Yes. That's how I'm Amen. Turn to page 142, page 142. <laughs> we have to be
Will you thank the Lord?